Chip, we're most of the way now through day two of the Deland Sport Aviation Showcase. Uh, weather kind of sucked this morning, but it's starting to break up a little bit now and people are going flying. So we're surprised to find you on the ground. Let's talk a little bit about what's happening with the Merlin program. You've uh, gone off in some interesting directions. Yeah, the Merlin is a really interesting aircraft because it's single seat and aircraft go up exponentially in price with the number of seats. So, so for $52,000, you can get a very nice 120 mile an hour all aluminum aircraft built, painted with a, a full EFAS with ADSB in and out and transceiver, transponder, electric trim, all that for 52,000 and it'd be three times more if you had that second seat. So the Merlin is doing really well. It slowed down a little because the HKS stopped production and then all the 582 stopped production, both suitable for the Merlin. So we've introduced our own engine. It's a four stroke and it's V-twin fuel injected, electronic ignition. It's a very modern engine. It's used by the thousands in ATVs and snowmobiles and motorcycles and other, that type of UTV vehicle. So it's very well tested, been on the market for years, and we're just the first to bring it in in, in quantity and adapt it to aviation. And we do that by having a reduction drive built for us in India and a custom-made propeller built for us in Slovakia to put on our aircraft built in Czech Republic. Well, this particular aircraft, though, uh, is show displaying some interesting technology. What are you doing with an electric propulsion system as an augmenter? Well, that's, um, that's two-part. Um, just to be clear, this is an ultralight, and it has a gas engine. And we have a version with an electric engine, a 30 kilowatt, that flies for an hour. And that's just conventional propulsion. But we have an innovation that could apply and be scaled up to other aircraft where we have distributed electric propulsion on demand inside the wingtips. And that does four main things. For the most part, it cuts the takeoff roll and landing roll by half. It's doubling the thrust of the aircraft for just 30 seconds. And 30 seconds, you're 500 feet up. You're clear of any obstacles. So you can take off in a, not much more than a helipad. On landing, it goes into reverse. So you can stop at a helipad as well. But it has some other features because it has, it's blowing the air over the ailerons. You get full roll control with zero airspeed. That means you can come in very slow and not worry about reverse ailerons or losing control in gusty conditions. And that helps make your landing roll shorter. But there's a couple other things that it does. When they're not in use, the hull sensors in the motor stop the propellers horizontally inside the wing. So there's no drag. But should you get outside of coordinated flight, say on a bad turn on base to final, where it's a classic stall spin scenario, one of the motors will engage and bring the ball back to center. So it has active envelope protection. Furthermore, because you have the same amount of thrust on the wingtips as you do on the engine, if you have an engine failure on takeoff, you still have plenty of power. Climb at 500 feet a minute, you have a few minutes of power, you can go around and land. So there's not an issue anymore with those those two main concerns of aviation. And when will this technology be available commercially? Well, that's an excellent question. I have no idea. <laughs> we're, we're just testing it. Um, we've done a lot of work on it. I work up in Dayton It's because uh, this work was funded initially by the Air Force Research Lab, where I've been doing several projects over the years. Uh, they're right next to Wright-Patterson. We're basically, we've proven it, we've written it up, and we have it patented and now we're just going into implementation and seeing how well it works and expanding the envelope of its utility. Well, somewhere down the line you've got to invite me to come out and fly it. It sounds interesting. Yeah, okay. We're based in um, South Lakeland Airport. We also have a build center at Dayton, Ohio and we have a third one now starting in the Mobile area, Alabama. Alrighty. Chip, we appreciate your time joining us on Aero News, Airborne and Aero TV. Thank you. Okay, thank you Jim. Aviation Safety Resources is disrupting the market for aircraft emergency parachute recovery systems. ASR systems are smaller, lighter weight, and offer longer repack cycles than similar products available in the current market. ASR has a recovery system available for every type of aircraft. Sport, experimental, light sport, general aviation, urban air mobility, vertical takeoff and landing, electric propulsion, and unmanned aerial systems. Find the right product for your aircraft at aviationsafetyresources.com.